Hi guys, today we'll be making Ezra's Scarlet's Heaven's Wheel Armor. Let's start with the wings. We will be making three different kinds of feathers today. The first one is the chibi feather on the screen. This is six inches by eight inches, and we will be making five of these. The next one is the medium feather. This is 16 inches by six inches, and we'll be making five of these. We also have two different kinds of wings. We have the top wing. This is 18 by 24 inches. The second is the butt wing, as I like to refer it, because it's near the butt. Um, this is 12 inches by 18 inches. So first, since I've already cut these out, I'll just skip right to the painting. You'll need a newspaper or a paper bag to cover your floor as you paint. The next is a paint tray or foam tray to put your paint in. Next are the paintbrushes. I suggest a wide paintbrush because you'll be covering a large surface of area. Next I'll use a sponge brush to paint the details. So, I will be using white tempura paint because it's easy to, if it becomes dry, you can always add water to it. Um, the next is blue tempura paint because then you can mix it and it's kind of blue looking. So we're going to give that to the edges. Next, I have silver paint as well. This is for adding that metallic silvery sheen that most armor has. So, I also have a cup of water to wet my brushes or clean the paint off my brushes to use different paint because you don't want blue on white, it's supposed to be white. So now I'll be starting with the butt wing. Um, so make sure your, your wing is completely on top of the paper so you don't get paint on your floor because then you'll have to clean it up. So I'm going to just lay out the blue paint right now. and get the white paint too, but for now we'll just be using the white paint because first you need to add a base layer of white paint so you don't get that brown cardboard um, showing through the armor that's supposed to be white and gray. Make sure it's fully and completely white because we don't want any of that brown showing through. So what I'm doing here is because I only need the middle part to be white, um, I'm just painting the middle part to save on white paint. set that aside to dry and we're going to start on the big wing now. So I'm going to be doing the exact same thing I did for the little wing and covering it in a base layer of white. Make sure you get into all the cracks like I'm doing so no brown is showing through.
moving on to the medium feather wing. Basically, you're going to be doing the exact same thing as you've been doing for the butt wing and the large wing, except you have less space to cover. So just make sure you have that bottom layer of paint, white paint as usual. So you'll also be doing this for all the cardboard pieces you have because you want to have that nice white look and not that brown look. So onto the chibi feather. So as you see, there's black words on the bottom of it. You don't want to paint on that because otherwise those black words will be very hard to cover up with that white paint. So that's why if you have black words on your cardboard, please try to avoid them. Either that or don't, um, either that or you have to use a lot of white paint to cover that up. So now that um, butt wing is now dry, we can move on to edging it with the blue paint. So we have to set aside those feathers to dry. What you want to do is that you want to start with a lot of white paint and just a touch of blue paint. Get that very light blue. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to do a gradient um, color scheme here for the edging. So what you want to do is you want to start getting that light, very very light blue paint and edging right where you want your wing is going to be. So you can't really see it but that's how light it is. So we're doing it very gradient, so it's first very thick, and then as it get, as the shades get darker and darker and darker, um, you're going to have to do it, um, like do it thinner and thinner and thinner, until the very edge, the very darkest blue, is so thin of a line, it's almost like you're drawing it with a fine tip Sharpie. And so that's what gives the effect of um, it slowly fading out into like this beautiful like line. So this is where you would start using the sponge brush for those nice straight lines because it has that straight line tip. Um, so you can just start brushing it along. Try to keep it as straight as possible, but also um, you have to be aware that the paint will still be wet.
also want to try to blend that paint, but also want to make sure that every single um, crack is filled because you still don't want to see that blue, then you don't want to see white through blue now. So it's the same concept as um, seeing the brown, the brown of the cardboard through the white. So you want to make sure it's completely blue around the edges. So if you have more time, you can definitely do more um, gradient like layers, but so far I'm just going to be doing four colors, um, sometimes even just three, but um, if you definitely have more time and more color ranges, I highly suggest that you take your time with this. Um, but if you're in a hurry, um, go ahead, just use four. And you can actually later on, if the paint is still wet, you can use your thumb like I'm doing right now to actually smudge it out and make it seem more gradient. And so there you have your butt wing looking all in its butt wing glory. So I will be later gluing on the feathers to add more detail to this. So for, so far this is just the basic. So next we'll be moving on to the chibi feathers. So we're going to add a second layer of white to make it sure it's purely and utterly white. We'll also be doing this with the medium feather as well. This one is now completely dry and now we're going to be doing the blue edging for this. So again, you only want to add a very little bit of blue to the white um, for the utmost layer. Right now my paint is at water, like a watercolor consistency, that's because my um, tempera paint is actually quite old and it dr dried up, but if you buy tempera paint fresh, it will not have the same consistency, so you can't do what I did and pour the white paint into the other, pa other pan, um, but you can do what I'm doing right now um, and edge, edge the wing like this with your sponge brush. I finished edging the um, top wing, so now I'm on to the bottom wing. So here's where we bring in the silver paint. Um, 
I'm doing this design like starting from the bottom because you know every cloud has a silver lining. It's not technically correct if you want to do it like I was just kind of fooling around here. If you want to um, play around with different designs of how to add the silver pane, go ahead. This is just how I'm doing it right now. Um, and so we'll be adding silver paint for every single wing related item. So onto the big wing, I'll be doing the same pattern as I did with the butt wing. So this one's going to be slightly longer in stroke, but it'll still be the same design. And instead of going to only the bottom feather, I'll be going to the second bottom feather. So now we're going to go on to the middle wing. So what I'm going to be doing is that where the silver is, that is actually going to be the bottom of the feather. So that's going to be pointing inwards of the wing. So I'm going to stroke it out kind of like in a petal fashion, like how petal veins come out. So that will go up to almost halfway of the feather and that is it for painting the wing. I will be talking about assembling the wing in its full glory after being painted and painting the back side of the wing as well in the next video. Thank you for tuning in. Please check out my video after this in order to find out what happens next. Bye!